record button is on. Good morning, everybody. This is Rama on Writing coming to you live from a just dawn, beautiful Kailua Kona, Hawaii. Uh, this week I bought myself a, a present. I have a scooter now so I can get down to the beach and the coffee shops. Those are the two important components about being in Hawaii. Um, I am a, uh, a coffee shop person. I don't know uh, if I drink that much coffee per se, but I like the environment of a coffee shop. And I think that, uh, you know, in my youth, I was drawn to use bookstores as a, another place that, you know, uh, people gather. And unfortunately, in this day and age, bookshops are dying on the vine. And, you know, it's, it's unfortunate in many ways. And i tell you that in my thinking, the reason why bookshops are dying is because they haven't found a way of, um, of you know, uh, featuring self-published authors. And to their, you know, to their, their credit, it, it is a hard thing to do because they're, you know, in this new age of publishing, there is there are a lot of self-published authors and uh, it's hard to sort through what's good and what's not. Um, there are different, excuse me, there are different um, people out there that, uh, you know, you know, small level publishers that may have catalogs. Uh, that is one of my goals for my upcoming webpage and to add to Tom's webpage is something like a catalog for all of our published authors. And we do have a ton of them out there, but we never put a catalog together. And I want to kind of set this up so that it could be uh, in an, in you know, kind of as itself, as a separate page, as a separate concept that we might be able to email it physically to uh, various bookstores or various uh, promotional activities. At some point in time, uh, you know, we hope to grow Sojourn Publishing to the point where we actually can leverage the industry a little bit more than we, uh, we are doing so now. Um, all this stuff takes time, and I haven't a clue of how to do that, so I drop this on Tom's uh, uh, lap, and he kind of sorts through it, and of course, it generally isn't a high priority until it becomes a high priority, and then Tom sorts it out and, uh, and makes it work. Um, you know, Tom and I work that way. I'm, I'm usually a few steps ahead of him, but I don't know how to do those steps, so I keep on badgering him, and either he uh, tells me to shut up or he kind of just keeps quiet and keeps listening, and then one day he takes that uh, idea and turns it into something that's real. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's the way I've had to work is, as I say, I'm a bike mechanic. I, I don't know nothing about uh, publishing, uh, you know, as far as, you know, what works and what doesn't, you know, I'm in the experimental stage along with you guys, and I'm doing a worse job at it than you are, perhaps, because I still don't have my personal website up, and I do not have my blog up. Boy, what a segue into blogging. I love this. <laughs> um, Blogging is a critical component of getting your name out there in the World Wide Web. And it is the, one of the easiest ways that you can keep your website active. And having an active website means that Google Search Engine Spider will visit it more often and re-rank you and hopefully get you to that first page in your search terms. The keywords that you utilize for your search engine optimization are also uh, keywords that you want to incorporate into your blog posting. The last time we did a blog webinar, uh, we were fortunate enough to have uh, Greg interested, and I drew on his expertise to help 
understand how the back office component of, uh, of blogging works. For those of you who don't know, WordPress is a template-based website development uh, uh, concept. It began as a blogging concept and grew to a full website component. Um, blogging is very powerful. And one of the things that I advocate, and I'm not sure that uh, everybody does this, but I find that uh, you know, it establishes an identity or can establish an identi identity a little bit clearer is to give your blog a name rather than just blog. Uh, to me, uh, sure, you know, I do click lots of blog links, but I would be more inclined to click a, um, a, a blog that's called the Renegade Mountain Biker blog. Okay, now two things that happen here. One is that I did register the renegade mountain biker.com, so the URL for that blog will be its own, uh, you know, URL as opposed to just a link off of my initial web page. So if my initial web page was Sedona Mountain Biking, um, if I just had a blog that was a clickable link, it would be Sedona Mountain Biking backslash blog. Okay, uh, so uh, I think that it has more traction if it comes up under its own uh, name. And I personally think that this is a cuter approach to take. Uh, whether it ultimately will bring any further, you know, uh, legs, so to speak, I cannot say. Uh, but to me, uh, identity is everything. Branding is everything. And so um, I find that this is good. Uh, you know, I hope to see one day on Bill Murphy's website the Metaphysical Trader blog. Okay, so you know, uh, I'm not alone. We've talked about these things with a number of, uh, of authors uh, along the way, and this is just my take on the game. You know, I'm all about establishing an identity. Now, bear in mind that uh, the Renegade Mountain Biker blog could also have a bunch of blog posts about Hawaii and Kona Coffee. Just because I've used the Renegade Mountain Biker as my identity does not mean I have to stick totally to one topic. And many blogs, you'll see uh, the blog page, and then you'll see on the, uh, the right hand or the left hand menu various topics that the blogger has chosen to blog about. Okay, one of the key components about blogging that turns many people away, and I can't tell you how often I've encountered an author where I said, oh, you have to post uh, once a week, and they said, I can't possibly commit to that. Well, blogging does not have to be in real time. Um, we can sit down in an afternoon and we can write blog postings for a month, two months, three months at a time. Uh, then we can actually schedule those blogs through the back office component of our website to go out on a regular uh, day, uh, week one, week two, week three, week four, week five. Uh, so we can take care of this. Now, many people don't comprehend that blog postings generally are short. When I say short, I'm talking about uh, as a low side, I think the recommended smallest blog posting is 350 words. And they recommend that you do not exceed about 750 words. Now, some authors can choose to write longer blogs, okay? Uh, you can write short stories, and you can make that your identity. But you do not have to. And I think that that's why when I uh, say to somebody they need to, you know, it's beneficial to 
uh, post to your blog once a week that they kind of view blog. Oh my God, I'm going to have to write, you know, 2000 words every, uh, every week. Well, no, you have to have a minimum of 350 words. Okay. Now, Let's just do the numbers real quick to, to ease everyone's consciousness. If in a normal Tom Bird webinar or Tom Bird retreat, we shoot to write at 500 words every 15 minutes, that means that every 15 minutes we can write a blog post. So even if it's real time, that's only 15 minutes. We can sit down on a Monday morning uh, with our cup of coffee before we go to work and we can write a blog. That's easy. Or we can take the approach of, uh, you know, taking a Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon, and we can write 10 blog posts in, what, uh, two and a half hours. So we have options here, gang, okay? Now, the hardest part about a blog, and, um, you know, I can say this until I'm blue in the face and I still haven't gotten my first blog post being done, is getting started, okay? Now, wasn't it Cher that said the, uh, the hardest part about exercise was getting started? Well, blogs are exercising of the mind or the pen, but it's true. It's hard to get started. And once we get started, it's not that difficult. Uh, one, of the, one of the key components that I have uh, read about in blogging strategy is that consistency is definitely one of the things we want to strive for. So if, in fact, uh, once a week seems like a hard thing, let's try twice a month. Um, let's at least all um, make it one of our goals to get started and get our blog going, okay? Um, and the other, when I say consistency, and we're talking once a week, twice a month, uh, one of the things that I've read is that it is good to pick a time where that blog comes out, uh, 1.30 Thursday afternoon, and make it a regular time where we either schedule blogs to go out, we write them in real time to go out at that point in time. So it becomes kind of uh, like uh, our audience can anticipate when it comes out. And the true, you know, successful bloggers probably you know, grow their blog to three or four times a week. Okay, now that's a bit to uh, to chew for all of us at this point in time because at first we blog and we're lucky if one person looks at our blog. It was the same thing with these webinars. When I first started them, uh, you know, sometimes there would be only one or two people on board. You know, now there's a regular group of 10 or 12 or 15 people, and sometimes these webinars can be 40 or 50 people. Um, I do have a goal set at some point to hit 100 people. Um, it would be really cool to see 100 cameras up, but, uh, you know, I like setting goals very, um, very high so that I can't figure out how to attain them um, easily. You know, I want to rely on the universe to help me because that's where the magic of the, the universe kicks in. And many of us are writing about these kind of components in our, in our books, whether they're spiritual books or whether they're, you know, books that have spiritual content in them. Even uh, my mountain biking book, which is, you know, very, uh, at first glance, very far from a spiritual component, uh, you know, does have a lot of spiritual components in it. So, um, you know, one of the things we do need to do is we need to trust that if we start blogging, that it will, you know, grow over time, and it always does, okay? But if we don't get started, it's not going to grow. Um, one of the components about email marketing is that uh, 
you know, uh, uh, we can grow an email marketing list. And every time that blog goes out, we can send an email out saying, hey, I just, uh, you know, had my, uh, my blog post and come check it out. And the component in, a, uh, in an email marketing campaign is we don't have our whole blog posted in that email marketing. We have a couple of sentences uh, listed in that and then a link that says read more. And that link goes to our web page. And by doing it that way, we can use our Google Analytics to track uh, you know where the traffic's coming. We can use the analytical component of uh, of our email software, our contact software, to determine how many clicks. I regularly look when I send out my uh, my um, reminder for the webinars. I generally look to see number one how many were opened and how many clicks I got. And it shows me a list of what got clicked. So if I have two or three different types of click-throughs, I can determine what my mailing list or what Tom's mailing list is interested in. And then I can modify my email marketing uh, to correspond with that. Now, one of the things that we can uh, grow for, and this was, a, this was a component that I started to think about after I chose the topic for this week, I, I started to think about, well, geez, we have a big community here amongst our authors. How do we utilize our own community to grow everyone's individual platform? And so that will be something that I'm going to really get into uh, after the first of the year. Um, we're going to develop some programs relating to, you know, kind of sharing the wealth, so to speak. Um, one of our, one of our uh, most engaged authors, and when I say engaged, I mean she is engaged in social media, she is engaged with blogging, she is engaged in newsletter uh, creation, she is engaged in writing more books. Uh, so uh, she has offered, her name is Catherine Carrigan, uh, she has offered to post people's blog with the stipulation that if you, if I post one of your blogs, you post one of my blogs. Okay, so this is a way that we can grow our blog audience. Of course, uh, you know, our blog has to uh, attract attention. Otherwise, uh, you know, it may not engage people. But we have to go through maybe a trial and error a level on that to figure out what topics people are interested in. But we can't determine that if we don't get started. So it goes back to getting started, gang. And I know um, I've talked to tons of authors who, you know, during this publishing process, they've, they've said, and this is one of the stupidest things I've ever heard, and it's one of the most common things I've ever heard is that, well, I can't wait to have my book available so that I can start blogging. Well, gang, the two have nothing to do with each other, okay? Sure, uh, we want to use our, our blog to attract attention to our book, but we have to get started to get an audience going. So why not get that website going? Why not get that blog going uh, ahead of the book? And then by that time, we've contacted, we've become friends with people, we've engaged people, and it will be uh, hitting the ground with a running start as opposed to waiting until my book is available before I do anything, okay? So, um, it's very difficult for us as authors and beginning authors to understand that, uh, you know, promotion can start years prior to writing the book. We have uh, our next book launch is early January. It is uh, a gal named Linda Laflamme. Linda is, uh, you know, just like you and me, except. She has been doing social media for a long time, and she has 25,000 Facebook fans. 
in one account and 11,000 on another account, okay? Now, she's going to utilize those and, uh, you know, when she does her launch, uh, she's going to leverage them as she gets her blogs going and keeps engaging that audience. She's got a running start. And so that is the concept that I want everybody to recognize is that there is nothing holding us back. Rama, do you hear that? Nothing holding uh, us back from getting started with our blog. <laughs> okay. So, um, at least I have some social media uh, going, but I think that uh, the website and the blog is a key component for all of us to start recognizing uh, to get going with. Now, one of the other components about blogs, and uh, I know we have, uh, we have Tom Carroll on board, and I'm going to use him as an example, and then I'm going to use another gentleman as an example as well. Well, Tom Carroll uh, does blog postings for other websites. There's a website called Sedona.biz. Uh, uh, I think the gentleman that owns it is Steve, and both Tom and I have known Steve for a long time. And uh, Tom has, uh, you know, written for that blog uh, for a number of years. He's kind of cut back uh, in the uh, short term, and I think he's going to reestablish that. What that is called is cross-blogging. What cross-blogging leverages is someone else's audience. What that means is that people who haven't found us on our social media or in our particular website can be, uh, you know, leveraged, okay? We can do a blog posting. Uh, normally with a blog, a cross blog, uh, the, uh, the owner of the blog will allow us to provide a link back to our website or our other blog or uh, our social media or something along those lines and we can attract that audience over to our uh, to become our audience as well okay it's not like you're taking it, them away from somebody else it's just that you're borrowing them and if you borrow them uh, maybe they'll become regulars at your website or your blog um, so cross-blogging is a critical component in growing an audience. Um, periodically, I do an interview with Curtis Mann. Uh, Curtis is writing book number three. He does a talk show. Uh, he's a conservative satirist, okay? He has a very specific genre. He has reached out and found organizations, blogs, uh, you know, where he can cross post to. And in doing so, he has grown his, you know, his, um, I'm not sure what the right word is, a little lost, but his footprint on the web. And by doing that, uh, he is utilizing someone else's uh, audience, someone that has, you know, had maybe a blog going for a lot longer than uh, Curtis has. And they've attracted an audience, and Curtis is now a regular poster on some of those uh, blogs. So one, number one with blogs is look for cross-blogging opportunities. Um, that takes some research. Uh, you actually have to go on uh, Google and research uh, blogs relating to whatever topic you're interested in writing about. And then um, you have to kind of figure out how to uh, get your foot in the door. And that may require that you comment on the blogs for a while. You start making some good uh, comments and posts on that blog. and. Uh, and eventually, you kind of contact the owner of the blog and say, hey, look, I've got this great blog going. I'd love to uh, post uh, um, to your blog and kind of do some cross-linking, okay? This is an easy way for us to expand our footprint, and we all 
have the opportunity to do so. One of the things that we disregard over and over and over again is the fact that we are authors. What that means is that writing words is one of the skills that we all possess. We assume that everyone else out there with a blog or a website also has that skill. Well, guess what, gang? That is a faulty um, assumption. Most websites out there are starved for new content. It can get, uh, you know, very tiresome. It can get very difficult for someone who has been blogging over and over and over again for years to, to continue with it. And they are in need of help. We are the Calvary. We can help these people, okay? So our job is to look for these kind of opportunities. And what we want to look for is, number one, a blog that is active. Because bear in mind, if somebody is posting a blog once a week, well, heck, how much more traction and engagement are they going to get if they are able to post twice a week? Okay, if one of those posts is our post, then we're going to grow our footprint. They're going to grow their footprint because more and more people are going to come on a more regular basis to their website, okay? So it basically, you can never have too much contact, okay? Now, that, uh, that can be, uh, you know, misconceived. We want to have good content. So, um, but these opportunities are out there. So we're going to look for a blog that has, number one, regular posting. If a blog was posted to in 2009, and even though it's the correct topic, uh, it's never been posted to since, chances are that person that had that blog is not engaged and interested anymore. Okay, and that website is not looked at as often as it once was. So we want to look for current posts. We want to look and try to determine whether there is an active audience. So comments, uh, you know, the amount of comments to a blog post. Uh, uh, sometimes they have a, uh, a, um, a number type of thing at the bottom that shows uh, this blog was looked at X amount of times. Okay, and if we see something, this blog was looked at a hundred thousand times. Well, gosh, you know that has a sizable audience potential. Okay, so we want to kind of glean uh, a little bit uh, uh, when we're searching to find activity, because otherwise, uh, you know, we may not be, uh, you know, able to benefit from. Uh, doing some cross blogging. Now, this can also be um, be uh, we can also grow the same concept to uh, Facebook pages, to uh, you know other social media outlet pages. Uh, I know more about Facebook than the other social media, so I tend to uh, use that as an example, and uh, you know. What I find is that for everyone, there are different social medias. But, you know, uh, LinkedIn might be the one that uh, is great for your topic. Uh, Twitter might be the one that's great for your topic. All of them, it's probably beneficial for us to have some level engagement on all the major social media sites. Um, and bear in mind, this is, you know, this is, again, not something that has to be done in real time, okay? And I've mentioned this before. There's something called a dashboard component, and uh, uh, with a dashboard component, we can do our posts ahead of time and schedule them to go out on a regular basis, just like we can do the same thing with our blogs, Okay, for those of you who don't know what a blog is or how to get started or need some help, you can use my best friend Google. And you can, you can just how to get started with a blog. 
and you will get numerous amounts of information out there that will help you get started. One of my blog gurus is a, is a man named David Risley, R-I-S-L-E-Y. And uh, he has blog university or something like that. Bear in mind, again, gang, that I'm not um, advocating spending money on his website. Uh, he is a huge internet marketer. And to do that, you have to give away a lot of free content. So check out the free content. Uh, for now, that is a that's all we need because we're not started yet. We're not making a living at blogging. This guy makes a living at blogging. He makes a living at teaching how to blog. Uh, you know, um, we may ultimately end up by being able to do that ourselves. Or we may end up by being able to teach a topic that we blog about and turn it into a larger platform. I think that's the goal that many of us do have. Uh, uh, moving in that direction. But bear in mind, you got to get started. And it's very overwhelming to, you know, look at, well, this is what I want to do from it and see that, well, I haven't gotten started yet. Uh, I can never achieve that. So why get started? Well, that's a pretty defeatist attitude. And so uh, let's drop those kind of attitudes and just say, hey, let's all get started with our blog. And, you know, blog topics are what interests us. So if we have a hobby, for example, going to flea markets, you know, we can blog about going to flea markets. It doesn't have to be the topic of our book. One of the things about a blog is that we share our personality and we're making friends and acquaintances based on that. And, uh, you know, if we do our job correctly and make those friends and acquaintances, they're going to go check out our books eventually. They might purchase a program that we're teaching. We may be moving into teaching. Um, and uh, this will segue into uh, something. Uh, Tom Carroll, I think, uh, uh, dropped off the line. But he asked me uh, um, when we just got started uh, about the Zoom platform up oh, there he's back um, and uh, you know whether how easy how difficult it is to utilize this and I said this is as easy as it could possibly be if you want to uh, you know purchase your own zoom account it runs ten dollars a month and you can uh, have up to 25 cameras on you can use it as often as you want um, you know, one of the, one of the dreams that I had was, uh, and this was a long time, it was a couple of years ago, I thought, gosh, it would be really cool to have our own author channel on some platform, okay? Uh, we can utilize the Zoom platform for that. Uh, I have a lot of open time on my accounts uh, uh, you know we have a master account that runs us fifty dollars a, a month and takes up to 100 cameras and then we have a couple of smaller accounts that uh, are you know ten dollars a month uh, you know I don't know if there's a benefit or not but uh, you know I can uh, provide a $10 account for Tom Carroll that can be his own. He can have his own login um, and he can do whatever the heck he wants with that. Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, I think he can do it on his own, but there may be some benefits to being under a master account. I don't know exactly what that would be. Uh, they have great customer support. And so, uh, you know, we could, uh, we could uh, you know, ask the guy, is there a benefit for creating a sub account in Tom Carroll's name for him as opposed to having him do his own? You know, I don't have the answer to that. Uh, so there are, you know, opportunities there for us to teach. Now, here's another uh, component that I, uh, I want to share with you all. Um, if we are to do a topic relating to a, uh, a live webinar, 
there is nothing wrong with writing it up in a text format and blogging about it. Okay, a different audience wants to read stuff than wants to listen to stuff. And even though it's the same content, there's nothing wrong with uh, with doing it. And some people, some people are ahead of the curve and actually prepare for webinars. Not like Rama. I just make this stuff up and uh, have no idea exactly what I'm going to talk about. And bear in mind, gang, that this time slot was really originally started for author interviews. And so as I uh, uh, close out my year email and begin the new year email, I will be scheduling new authors that have uh, created and finished their books to come talk to us. And we'll keep that going as one of our main components. Uh, so uh, there is a forum for all of us to start teaching and talking. And even my other webinar uh, relating to the business of writing and publishing is open for you all to do presentations and get familiar. It's, again, very hard to get started. There's a lot of fear involved. And um, I remember my first time. I remember Gwen's first time. And these have become now topics of jokes. For us to laugh about uh, because now she does them regularly I do them regularly it's really kind of like an online blog uh, one of my favorite uh, uh, characters and this has nothing to do with uh, a topic uh, about books per se although I did see that she just wrote her book there's a gal named Felicia Day uh, she is an actress uh, um, and uh, she's been in some TV shows, but she's created a lot of her own content. And she has something called a flog. Okay, well, a flog is basically a video blog. Okay, usually they're put up on YouTube or uh, a Vimeo, I guess. Uh, um, but the reason why she's become a favorite of mine is that she is just like one step above us beginners okay her content is very homegrown and when you see it you say well heck i could do that and so uh you know these are kind of things that help us move forward when we see somebody with a million followers on youtube and how homegrown her content is it becomes a reality that we can accomplish these same kind of things Okay, so that's my talk for today. The last component I'm going to mention uh, uh, before I uh, open up the forum or uh, close out for the year is that in addition to blogs, cross blogs, social media, there is something out there basically that I consider blog Rolodexes. Okay, I don't remember those sites because I didn't do any preparation, which is my norm. Um, but there are websites that you can register your blog at. And people go to those websites to find a blog on mountain biking or on uh, stock trading or on... Uh, um, you know, uh, veterans uh, concerns or whatever it is that uh, uh, we want our blog to be about. And they find uh, a list of what blogs are there. And so we want to get our blog listed in those Rolodexes. And uh, Tom Carroll, that is something that you can add to uh, uh, Steve's thing at Sedona.biz because I'll bet you he's not in any of those Rolodexes. And he can expand his growth by doing that. And then you bring money to the table for him and he owes you a favor. So uh, scratch his back and he'll scratch your back. And all this is how we grow our, you know, our audience. Uh, through this process. Okay, gang, uh, if anyone has any comments, uh, they can unmute themselves, or if you can't figure out how to do that, you can just wave your hand and I'll unmute you. Um, 
Bear in mind, up, oh, Bill. Bill Murphy has <laughs> unmuted himself. Our Florida, soon to be Florida boy. That's right. <laughs> Return to the Florida scene. So, if if we get this Zoom thing, can we we make videos of Zoom, record them, and then put them on, post them on YouTube? Are those formats compatible? That works. We could do yes, that. That does work. And, uh, you know, as I say, I've been negligent in, uh, in getting Greg to upload those things, uh, um, you know. And, you know, and you made an obvious uh, comment here that we have never pursued. And this is so much of a no-brainer that I, you know, I, you, know you kind of have to kick yourself in the butt. And so I'm kicking myself in the butt. You know, I can post all of these through to, through to the Tom Bird uh, channel, or I could create my own Rama channel, or Rama's Author Alliance channel, or Promote Your Book Now channel, or the Renegade Mountain Biker channel on YouTube, and I have a whole series of these things uh, available. So, uh, you know, thank you, Bill, for the comment. Uh, you know, um, generally... The way this is done is that you set up a channel on YouTube, uh, uh, and I believe that uh, YouTube is owned by our favorite uh, or our nemesis, Amazon. So you use your Amazon account, or maybe it's your Google account. It's owned by one of those two. Um, and what you do is you create, you call Greg and say, Greg, I have a video on YouTube, and he creates a window on your website. And so when people click on that window, it plays that video off of the YouTube. So YouTube is hosting it. You don't have to pay for the hosting, which used to be a thing. I don't think it's much anymore. And, uh, and uh, it's through your own website plus it's searchable through YouTube as well. So uh, good comment, uh, uh, Bill. Thanks. And uh, I'm going to send this out. Oh, uh, another thing for my uh, year-end uh, uh, component here. Zoom for all. Okay, uh, uh, Lynn, you've unmuted yourself. Uh, what's your comment? Um, actually, I have a question, and I wanted to ask you because I don't think I'll be talking with you or Gwen for several weeks. Um, it looks like my second book, first draft, is finished, and um, I, but I'm still editing the first book. So I'm wondering, what what do I do? Let the other one just sit, work on both at the same time? Well, uh, <laughs> this is really a, a great question, Lynn. Uh, um, number one, you have to get a book done, okay? I have authors that have uh, many books finished and none published. Uh, we don't want you to fall into that trap because, you know, we want to get one published. Now, I remember from our last conversation, uh, you had a concern as to which book you might want to publish first. Uh, so um, I think that you uh, uh, might need to do a little soul searching on that and say, well, gosh, uh, which one of these do I want to get out first? Now, uh, one of the things that I regularly say, and this really uh, uh, can disappoint people or not, uh, is that your first book is probably not going to be your best book. So uh, some authors have chosen uh, a book based on that saying, well, look, I want to get this, this one out. This isn't, my, this isn't my passion, but I want to get this done so that my second book, which will be better, uh, can be even better. So, uh, you know, uh, you're probably going to need to kind of go through a little soul searching on that component and say, hey, this is the one I want to do first. Uh, um, you can certainly work on book two while you're publishing book one. And uh, a number of authors have shared uh, chapters of book two in the promotion of their book one. So it is great to have that book available. Uh, the biggest thing that I've read that you can do to promote book number one is to have book number two 
ready and done. So uh, they do go hand in hand, uh, but, 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 you have to make a decision here because one or the other needs to go through the publishing timeline first and get out the other side. Because I can't tell you how much you learn going through the process that can make the second book more complete and more better than, as, as it said in Hawaii, mo beta. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this is really a great question, Lynn, and I, and I thank you for that one. I don't have a, a really good answer for you there, but uh, all I know is that you need to make a decision. You need to go with one of them as your first book. Uh, otherwise, like I have one author that has nine or ten books, and she's got them done and ready to be uploaded essentially. But as far as I know, none of them have ever been turned into real books. Well, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to go with the first, my current book, because I already have one that's published from a while back, mm -hmm. um, from 10 years ago. But, but this one is like nearly ready and, and feels more complete. The second book, the next one, doesn't feel complete at all. So um, I'll work on the one, and when I feel... The impulse, I'll spend some time with the second one, too. Sounds good. Uh, you know, for those of you who are looking to submit manuscripts by the year end or things like that, uh, the next time that Tom will be doing any soul reviews are January 7th and 8th. Um, I know I have a couple of uh, already scheduled, uh, so I can only get, uh, you know, a few in there before the following week. And bear in mind that this is the last webinar until um, the third week in January. I'm going to be taking off next week, the first week in January, and then uh, the weekend uh, – of the 10th, uh, we will be live with a remote retreat, and I have decided that I cannot be a good multitasker and do two things at once. Uh, you know, it's just too much of a challenge for me. Maybe it's too much work, I'm not sure, but uh, I feel that it stresses me out to try to do that. So, uh, you know, I've stopped doing those components. So whenever I have a live uh, remote going. I will not be doing webinars this coming year. Um, but I think that's only about, uh, you know, five or six uh, weekends a year. So it's not that great. Um, and short of that, I pretty much am live every weekend uh, unless I, you know, decide that uh, I'm uh, flying on a plane to Hawaii or something like that, which I do periodically. I want to thank you all for uh, tuning in uh, over the year. Uh, you have all grown to be like my kids. And, uh, you know, even though many of you are older than I, uh, you're still my kids, so there's no getting around that. Um, and you're also my family. And uh, one of the things that my first book talked a lot about was the creation of community. And so uh, we've done a great job. We have a great community. I love you all. I've learned from all of you. And, uh, you know, when I don't do the webinar, sure, it's nice not have to get up, getting up at 6 o'clock uh, uh, to do the webinars. But I really do miss all of you. And now that I can see your faces, it's really made this even, uh, even more fun than it was. Uh, James Parker, you were late this week. Uh, we're just, uh, we're just, uh, you know, uh, uh, ending things. And, uh, you know, just to, uh, since James just uh, tuned in, uh, James, I did edit your, uh, your little write-ups a little bit and sent them back to you. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to uh, keep those things or not, but uh, um, you're moving ahead quickly, James. So, uh, Let's get that book into formatting and on its way. Um, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm kind of stuck. It always, it always takes the longest path to get somewhere, and that's the path I'm going down, I think. I'm not making uh, as quick a strides as I'd like. 
I've always worked at a job where when you're given the job, you have to get it done by a deadline. Well, I, I don't have that anymore. <laughs> Well, James, we can set our own deadlines. Uh, so if you want to uh, drop me an email, I'm good at setting a deadline for you. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm afraid of. <laughs> and I have no problems with you blowing through your deadline, but this is a really important concept. Uh, and we talked about this uh, not that many weeks ago, that uh, let's all set our goals for this coming year. Let's set deadlines for ourselves. And just know that the best thing about a plan is that we can change it. Everyone have great holidays. Have a great happy new year. I'll be back in the new year. I am still available for emails and phone calls. Uh, so if you need to speak, uh, you know, uh, just drop me an email. We'll set up a time. Take care, everybody. It's been a great year working with you. Thank you.